welcome back to freefellowshop.com and video tutorial number 21 in this series on the levels command. In the previous video we looked at the RGB histogram, now it's time to look at the luminance histogram here inside Photoshop. Now you remember from the last video that an RGB histogram did a great job in alerting us when we started clipping colours inside individual channels. The trouble was that it couldn't accurately portray what was happening inside the shadows and highlights of the image. Well that's where the luminance histogram comes in. I'm going to start off by walking you through some of the things that are important when looking at a luminance histogram. And you can see right off the bat that looking at the text here, a luminance histogram looks specifically at the brightness of a pixel independent of colour. And we'll see why that matters in the next few slides. For the moment, and right from the start, we need to understand that the human eye doesn't detect red, green and blue light equally, so the luminance histogram aims to reflect this. Now, a big advantage of using a luminance histogram is that we can accurately see shadows and highlights in an image, and one of the disadvantages is that we get no alert when individual colour channels are being clipped. OK, I'm going to move on to the next slide entitled Calculating Luminance. And this is pretty much it, actually. Along the left-hand side here, we have eight colour swatches lined up almost in order of luminance. We can then see the calculation that's performed and the resulting luminance value that's assigned to each of these colours. For the moment, don't worry too much about the calculation because I've got a couple of examples lined up to walk you through that one. But for now, you'll remember me telling you that the human eye doesn't detect red, green and blue light equally. Well, you'll be able to see that a lot easier now if you look at the blue, red and green swatches and they're representing luminance levels. Luminance, by the way, and I probably should have explained this right off the bat, luminance is another word for brightness. Now, this lives by the science, this whole theory lives by the science that the human eye is least receptive to blue light. Hence, a luminance value of 28 here for the blue swatch, meaning that we see blue light as the dullest colour on the chart here, with the exception of black. Then comes along red, and that has an assigned luminance of 76, followed by the brightest primary colour, which is green. And if we look at this as a percentage, blue light is allocated 11% of the eye's vision, then comes red, which holds 30%, both of which fall considerably behind green light, which comes in with 59%. And if you look at these three swatches on screen here, you should recognise that the green one is brighter. The green one is displaying a lot brighter than the blue one, I'd say, which is the least illuminating, which only goes to back up what we're actually discussing here. OK, now the next swatch is magenta, which of course is made from mixing red and blue light. And that has a luminance of 105. So it's interesting to know that, first of all, that the luminance value of magenta is directly the sum of blue and red added together. And the reason we're one out, by the way, is caused from the rounding of the numbers. And second of all, by adding the blue and red lights together, we still don't make a colour that's as bright as the green. OK, next we have cyan, which is made from blue and green light. After that comes yellow, which is a combination of red and green light. And finally we get white if we mix all three primary colours together, which gives us a maximum luminance level of 255. Now remember I said in the notes earlier that luminance is independent of colour. Well, to prove that, I'm going to open up the layers palette, and I've already prepared a channel mixer adjustment layer. And just to show you what's going on here, I'm going to double click the thumbnail to bring up the settings. And you really have got to love these live editable adjustment layers. They allow you to do all kinds of things here inside of Photoshop. Now, first of all, I'm going to turn these swatches to grayscale. So we're seeing the brightness of the pixels independent of color detail. And the way I've got this set up is to mimic the way our eyes are responsive to color. So I'm taking 30% brightness from the red channel, 59% brightness from the green channel, and just 11% brightness from the blue channel. And I'm going to click the OK button to leave the channel mixer controls, 
and then I'm going to turn the channel mixer adjustment layer on to see the swatches in grayscale. This isn't an exact example of what's happening by the way, but it is a good representative of how our eyes see luminance levels. Okay, look first of all at the top here. We knew black would come out black, but look at just how dark blue is. Barely any luminosity at all. And I don't know how you're viewing this, whether you're viewing it from the freephotoshop.com website, in which you're probably viewing pretty good quality videos, um, but they are downsampled, so you may miss some details that existed from the original recordings here. Or you could be viewing this from the YouTube website, for example, which tends to offer pretty small and pretty low quality videos generally. But however you're viewing it, I can see a slight shift of luminance here on my screen. Um, that may not be the case wherever you are. But um, on my screen, I can see a slight shift between the black and the blue. And then as we move down the chart, the swatches become lighter. We get this blip here where we make magenta with blue and red. Green then comes in and overtakes that in respect of brightness. Then we get back to normal with cyan, yellow and finally white. Okay, hopefully that's given you a good idea about just how different luminance can be when compared to colour. I'm going to switch back to this image here, as it's the same photograph we worked on in the advanced histogram video, so no introductions needed. Now I'm going to bring back the histogram palette and switch the type of histogram out to luminance like so. And if you're still seeing the all channels view, then you can go ahead and downsize it to the expanded version. And notice what this is telling us. It's accurately telling us that we haven't got any clipped shadows or clipped highlights for that matter. In fact, I'm going to bring up a levels adjustment layer here. Not going to worry too much about naming it at this stage. I'm going to refresh the histogram cache and notice now which one of the RGB channel histograms the luminance histogram looks most similar to. I'll switch to the red channel and not really, that doesn't look too much like it. Let's have a look at the blue channel, it's getting closer. Now let's have a look at the green channel, and wow, that looks just like the uh, luminance histogram actually, almost identical I'd say. And that is of course no coincidence. The green channel contains data most visible to the human eye, and that's what the luminance histogram is all about. So it's only natural that they're similar. They're not going to be exactly the same, but you are going to find the majority of the times that you work on these histograms, you are going to find that the luminance histogram is similar to the green histogram. Okay, I'm going to make a few adjustments to this photograph using both of these histograms here. So first of all, I'm going to set the black points here in the composite histogram to 20 and refresh the histogram. Then I'll switch to the red channel and change the black point to a value of 17 and to compensate for that I'll change the midtone slider to 1.1 and once again refresh the luminance histogram now I'll switch to the blue channel and here I'll enter values of 23 for the black point tab across to the midtone slider and enter 0 0.90 and then finally a value of 252 for the white point slider and then refresh the luminance histogram once more. Now I'll switch to the green channel and I'm going to increase the black point slider to a value of 10 and refresh that once more. Okay, I think that's looking fairly good. The important thing here is that we're working with both the RGB and luminance histograms as individual tools and my advice there is to work like this as much as you can. They're both going to give you different qualities and it's going to be a really good addition to your workflow. I'm going to hit the OK button here and the important thing to remember is that you're going to have to keep refreshing the histogram. In fact for this exercise I almost went ahead and lowered that cache level in the preferences but that would have meant a restart and so I didn't go for it in the end and call me lazy I guess that's the only reason why I didn't go for it. Well things are looking good and just to finish things off here I'm going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer just to make the image a little more vivid. We don't want too much as I remember taking this as an afternoon was turning into an evening and I think the value of 10% here for saturation is enough just for a subtle modification. I'll click OK to accept that and now let's check out the before version of this photograph well, very washed out looking and very low contrasty looking. 
and here's the finished version of our photograph looking not perfect but looking a lot better I'd say we perhaps need to do a little bit more work but I'm going to leave that up to you to finish things off here with this image okay I'm now going to hide the layers palette away and I'm going to finish things off here by switching to this image here called luminance example one and all we're going to be doing here is looking at how a pixel's luminance level is calculated starting with this bright green here so here's the swatch this is the color we're working with and then these three swatches underneath here are the red green and blue values that we need in order to create this color so we have a red value of 0, a green value of 255 and a blue value of 0 as well. Underneath the channel values we have the ratio of light that's taken from each channel and that's being displayed as a series of numbers that add up to 1 which means we can use multiplication to give these RGB values a luminance value and never exceed the maximum of 255 brightness levels. OK so let's roll with the first sum we have no light coming from the red channel so that's going to be a zero no matter what you multiply it by then we have a value of 255 in the green channel so we multiply that by 0 0.59 to give us a value of 150 the blue channel is the same as the red channel we have no light in that sum so we have another zero we now have three values of 0, 150 and 0 from the three channels we add them together to give us a luminance value for this pixel of 150 and it's as simple as that. Let's do another one real quick seeing as we're having so much fun over here. I'm going to switch the image to luminance example 2 and here we're working out the luminance level of this orangey looking colour. So we take the brightness level in the red channel and multiply that by 0.3 we take the brightness level in the green channel and multiply that by 0 0.59 then we take the brightness level in the blue channel and multiply that by 0 0.11 finally we take the three figures we've arrived at and then add them together throw them all in there shake them all around a bit and we should come up with a luminance level of 163 well we're really starting to cover some ground now in the next video we're going to discuss the colour histogram and see how it differs from the two we've already looked at. Well thanks once again for joining me here at FreePhotoshop.com. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.